Hello, everybody. I am here with uh, Dan Cronin, Fat Bald Guy Racing, Keeneland Dan, whatever you want to call him, Ed DeRosa, Horse Racing Nation, uh, well-known handicappers. Uh, I don't think we've been together since the Preakness, uh, but uh, we did the Derby, we did the Preakness, and we are here to do the Arlington Million at Colonial Downs. What do you think? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad they kept the race. I mean, it's a million dollars and a grade one. You know, I wish they would have kept the track too, but. No, we all, we, I think we all do. I don't think there's anybody that's actually happy about no. how, how that, that went, but. Yeah, I don't think the Bears are even happy about how that went. No, man. And, and he, even from that standpoint, and I know, Dan, you're a big football I mean, Soldier Field was kind of like a staple of the of the NFL, you know. So yeah, I don't think them Chicago people are going to be happy if they have to drive to Arlington Heights. They're they're not going to like that if it actually happens. No, I mean, I I grew up in Cleveland where they tried the Richfield Coliseum experiment. And pe people just don't want to go out to the exurbs to for professional sports. Yeah, I kind of. Kind of, kind of agree, and um, Lions fans can speak to it as well. Well, what 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 kind of race do we think we have uh, tomorrow? I I think this I think is a really good rendition. Uh, you know, the the division in general is lacking some superstar power, so you know there were there weren't any to show up other than the Manhattan winner who's on the show. But I mean, I. The, the someone who helped make the line and then handicapped it for this. Uh, this is super competitive. I thought it was a really competitive race myself. The one thing that disappointed me, and I, I, I guess, you know, it just kind of is what it is. I mean, we've got 11 horses, which is not bad, but is really good, especially, you know, for what we've been seeing lately. I would have liked to have seen a couple of European horses come in. I think, yeah. You know, for, for this time of year and this much money, we should have had at least a couple. Uh, didn't get any that I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why, what the thinking behind that is, but I heard there were some quarantine issues with the, the ship into either DC or they could have went to New York and then it's a long van ride and that, right. uh, you know, I, I know they tried to hustle Aiden O'Brien pretty hard. Obviously he was a big supporter back in the day. Right. And it, it didn't work out. So hopefully they, they figure it out for next year. Uh, Cause I know they tried, I, I can for sure say that. And, and they were willing right. to put a little money behind it. And just, there was a lack of comfort to get the horses through quarantine. All right. Well, we're, we're, we're pressed a little bit for time. So we've got 11. Let's uh, let's get to it. Ed, we'll start with you and the rail. What do you think of a uh, strong tide on the wood? Uh, well, we won't need to spend too much time on this one. I, I definitely think Strong Tide is uh, among the outsiders. There's only a few in the group because, as we both noted, it is very competitive. But uh, this one, to me, just you know, looking at a mile and a quarter in this group, I, I think there's some brilliance, and uh, he just seems to be a couple of. I yeah, I, agree. I agree. I agree. He's a cut below. I I try to figure out how could he win. Could he send him to the lead and hope that he keeps going? Because I mean, he'll get the distance. That that's not an issue. Correct. I just I just don't think he's fast enough. I I because he's not going to stalk and win, and I don't think he can make the lead. I I I just think he's a cut below. I I can't get to him. I agree. Uh, I I I couldn't find a scenario in my mind where where he winds up crossing the wire first. Unless we yeah. get, unless we get 10 scratches. Right. Uh, it's not Saratoga, so right. that probably right. won't happen. Uh, ne ne never explain. I don't really like him to win, but he, he wouldn't shock me. Uh, you know, he's a kind of typical late developing shug horse that's just kind of gotten better with time. I, I, I mean, he's learned how to put some good races together. I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if he runs well and, and makes a little bit of noise. I, I, I don't I don't pick him to win. I don't think he's going to be the winner. But uh, 
I, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see him in the fight at some point down the lane. Relu- reluctantly, he's my top pick only because we okay. have to pick, only because we have to pick somebody. And All right. I, I didn't really have a huge opinion on, you know, one horse in here. I, I think I got three of them that I think could get us through the pick four or pick five or whatever you're playing. But I, I think he's got a big chance to win. I don't like the rider chains. I'm not going to sit here and say I do. I mean, Saez is the top two or three rider in the world and Shamanad's not. Let's just put it that way. Um, but he's not bad. I mean, he's okay. No, he's good. I think he's pretty good, Shamanad. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's you just know. not Saez. So, right. but the horse is getting better, I think. And I, and I think he's going to be right behind the speed, sitting fourth or fifth, couple lengths off to where he can make his run. And if he can get the distance, maybe get a good trip, he could pay $15. Now, I wouldn't tell anybody to run and bet on him, but we got to pick somebody. So he's my reluctant top pick. What do you think of him, Ed? I'm more in your camp, Jonathan. I, I just worry. I mean, it looks like he likes the stock. And I do think there's some pace in here. So, you know, do, do you chase? Uh, and if not, you try to sit and kick. And I just think there are others here when the real running starts turning for home. I don't know that never explains at that level. Uh, definitely get with Dan saying. Uh, so for me, he's a, a second tier. Uh, there's a big single in my mind in the Beverly D, especially with the two scratches. So depending on how you structure tickets, maybe you want to use this one paying $15 with Fev Rover. Uh, so, so I get that over a horse like Atone, who's going to be one of the top choices here, but uh, still for me, middle tier. Who is the, who is the, the single in the Beverly D? Not Fev even. Rover. Who? Fev Rover. Oh, okay. Uh, D- Didya and uh, Rocky are both scratching. Right. Rocky, I think, ran today. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why. I like Didia. So, yeah, yeah. She, she's out. Okay. She's out that the other one's a cinch. Right. Um, back to the million. Ed, while, 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 while you've got the floor, what are your thoughts on the Judmont horse from Brad Cox set piece? This is the one I'm eager to hopefully bet. Uh, and, and I wish I maybe had the line back because I'd probably go a little lower than six, uh, especially after looking at everything. But he is a constant money burner. So I'm a little nervous about that. But, you know, if he's a $10, $12 horse, that's going to be okay for me. He just, he runs his race. And I think there's going to be enough in front of him uh, that he's going to be the one, one of the ones coming late. So, you know, if he steams like he always does and ends up three to one or seven to two, uh, I'm going to be looking elsewhere, especially given that I, you know, like Feb Rover. So it's not really a, a sexy way to keep the pick five going. Uh, but from a, a you know potential win standpoint, who I think is most likely to hit the board, it's definitely set piece. And uh, you know, for me, nine to two, five to one is what I'm hoping for. You know, it's 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 interesting you said that that uh, especially about pace because you know I make my own notes in formulator and say and 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 save them and uh, there's there's a, a, about ten races here where my comment is just. Bad setup, not enough pace, <laughs> didn't get the setup. And, you know, a lot of those races where he burned money were those kind of races. And this race to me did look like it set up better for him. And it also looked to me like he's a horse that's really going to appreciate the extra distance. I mean, it's hard to imagine that in 28 starts, this horse has never run this far. Yeah, that's incredible. That, scare, that scares you know? me. Okay. I mean, I think he's one of the three that can win. I, uh-huh. I think there's three, and that's and I think he's one of them. I, I just, man, Brad Cox is so sharp, at least in my mind. I, I think he's one of the top three in the country. Why is he ne- all the mile and a quarter races, all the mile and three eighths races out there? Why has this horse never been in any of them? I, I don't, I, I just don't get it. I, I don't understand why. So he must think something, and then he throws him in here as a seven-year-old. I mean, if he's six or seven to one, like he is on the line, yeah, absolutely. I want him in my pick fours and fives. But like Ed said, if he goes down to two and a half, three to one, then I'm gonna hope I, you know, then I'm gonna hope even if I got him, he doesn't win. 
You know, uh, and there's, there's two schools of thought for what you brought up about Brad. Yes, he's never run him at a mile and a quarter, you know, in all those starts, which makes you say, hey, why not? But by the same token, if you respect him that way and he's doing it now, I, he, he wouldn't be doing it, I don't think. I, you know, he doesn't run horses where he doesn't think they can win. So Yeah, right. and, and I mean, last year's million was a mile and an eighth because it was a Churchill. And then really otherwise for a mile and a quarter for males, I think the Manhattan might be it. Um, so, you know, I, that could help explain it. So, you I know, agree. Ruse won this race before. Obviously, that was at Arlington, not here. But, um, yeah, he's he's in the mix for me. Atone. Dan, what do you think of Atone? Well, at first glance, I thought he could win. And then the more I looked at the pace, I was like, well, geez, I don't know. I, He's a not, I mean, if they send him forward with Carmooch, he figures to send him forward. He sends everything forward. Um, I don't think he can lay, I don't, I don't think he can go wire to wire. And I think that price is way too low. I mean, at least from, and I mean, I understand why he's seven to two because he's got a hundred numbers, but I, I just don't think this race sets up for him. I, I think there's too much gas with him and uh, that layoff. I think he's going to get tired. I think he's a bad play at seven to two. I, I'm not using him in the pick fours or fives. I, to me, he's out. I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna toss him as well. Uh, uh, again, like like Chug's horse, he he won't surprise me if he wins, but he's just he's just not where I land. Um, especially at the price, I think he's going to be. I think the line is pretty accurate, uh, and he he gets bet hard a lot. This horse, for whatever yeah. reason. And well, uh, they see all those ones and they see the hundreds. Yeah. So, well, you know, a lot of those guys, they come in and that's how they read a form or program. They just go right to the numbers and they see a hundred and they start betting. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to fade him. But again, you, you know, if he, if he wins, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't be shocked. You yeah. like him? You know, it's, he was seven to two in the world cup against 11 others. Uh, off a allowance win. So yeah, the, the steam's there when it's there. It was part of why I was comfortable making him the favorite. Uh, it was odds on in the munis after that, but he's, you have to think he's going to go to the lead and Carmouche has experience doing that. I agree with both of you with the pace concerns. I think he'll dig in. I mean, I think he'll get a thrill. He's only beaten a length. I mean, you see the fifth in the dinner party, but that was a, a blanket finish and uh, some good ones ahead of them just couldn't see it out for whatever reason they go slow maybe things get interesting but is the chalk or even second choice he's he's tough to back with the dynamics uh, I, I i i agree uh what are your thoughts ed on uh one of chad's two runners rock emperor um i'm excited because this is actually a horse who doesn't seem to take money despite being chad the last time he was favored, he won, uh, which is a very short field. The number of power is there. And, you know, if I if I only had had the sheets to look at to say who's going to be the favorite, he may have been it right there with set piece. Uh, but just, you know, as Dan said, people look at the PPs, they're going to see ninth by nine. They're going to see a couple fourth place finishes. They're going to see he didn't take a lot of money in those races. So I think there is some opportunity. Now he's by no means is going to be overlooked here, but the number power is too good. He's he's on all my tickets, uh, and I'm hoping the five to one holds. Dan? Yeah, I agree. I think he can win. I, I think he's one of them that can win. And uh Johnny V's not gonna hurt him. You know, obviously the concern is the last couple of years, he's only run seven times. He's got the one win in the bowling green. Other than that, he's been pretty flat. But the distance isn't a concern. Obviously, Chad's not a concern. The no Lasix isn't a concern. Um, I, I, I think he's going to get the pace, and he's a dead closer. I, I think he's going to be rolling at the end. I, I think he's got a big chance to win. And by six to one, to me, he's perfect for the pick fours and fives. He's going to be on my ticket. Okay. Um, Agreed. I... Uh... I respect him. I think he's capable, but he's another one that is not where I land. 
uh, masterpiece. Second time Rick Dutro, something that we saw happen last Saturday. That yeah. humble, humble brag was one of my best wagers in a very, very long time. I loved White of Barrio. Uh, and you guys know the way I bet when I really like something like that, I try very hard to make it count. And I was able to do that last week. Uh, and one of the reasons, and there were several, but one of the reasons that I liked uh, White of Barrio was that it was second time Dutro and he had more, more, more time with the horse. Nothing, nothing against, you know, Safi or McCarthy or Chad, even who obviously who had him, had him before that. But uh, I, I, I think on that alone, on that alone, he's dangerous. Uh, he's a, he's an absolute use for me. Hmm. Well, well, it's hard to argue against Dutro. My my biggest concern was he was he was bet well back for for Babe uh, the brief layoff, and ran, I mean ran okay. He was second, but at three to two, maybe would have liked to seen a little bit more. And the number came back one of the slowest performances of his career period. So for me, you know, the applying the numbers theory, so to speak, I just worry that can Rick have him jump up that much more to get back to where he was running. Now, if yes, and 12 to one isn't a bad price to find out, admittedly, he's absolutely in the mix. Uh, but I just I just felt like that return just wasn't close enough to the level it's going to take to win here to, to gamble on. He, he definitely needs a career race to win. All right. And, and I, 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 I agree with that. I, I made my own excuse for his last race and maybe I'm right. And maybe I'm wrong, but I look at the, the splits and I see 25, almost 26, almost 51 to the half, not much to rally into on a yielding turf course, which, you know, I'm thinking he's not going to get on Saturday. Uh, that, that was the first time he'd ever been on that kind of course. So I'm saying maybe he didn't like it. Uh, you, you know, wasn't really his distance. Uh, Chad won the race with a horse that was on a little bit of a roll. So I'm, I'm going to forgive that last race and say second time Dutro, he's going to go forward and, 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 and run one of his better races. And again, even his better races are probably not good enough without taking a little bit of a step forward. But I, I believe in Rick enough uh, to, to think that's going to happen. And he's one of two that I will be using. We haven't gotten to the other one yet. Oh, all right. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not using him. Uh, it's one of these kind of races, though. I mean, it's, you could make cases for probably nine horses in here, really. I mean, this is that's the kind of race it is. Um, I can't talk you off a 12 to one, but I think, you know, third, fourth or fifth is probably where he's going to end up. I, he's just not my kind of horse. He, he's not the best closer. He's not fast enough to be up near the pace. He'd have to get a dream trip and win by a nose in my estimation. But, you know, it's one of them races. I, nothing would shock me really other than somebody going wire to wire. I, <laughs> I, I just, I just don't like him. He's not one of my three. I named my three already. Um, and that's probably, there's only one other one I might take. And if John likes the same one, I might end up with four of them, but, uh, yeah, I don't, he's not, I will, be. I will throw this out. You know, so many of these turf races look like they've got no pace and then somebody winds up going out and going wide or wide. And sometimes you got these races that look like there's a ton of pace. And nobody goes except one horse and you're scratching your head saying, how is this horse alone on his lead with all these other horses that look like they have pace? So it, it's very tough for me to be confident in, in, in my pace projections in these grass races. And I don't know why or how we've evolved to that, or, or maybe it's just me, but yeah, I agree. It looks like a lot of speed and uh, you know, we're all looking for a closer and watch somebody go wire to wire and nobody right. can him the whole way, you know, and he just steals the race. So uh, strong quality. Anybody give him a chance? I mean, he's he's got to be one of the ones that's on the lead the way I look at it or going, you know, contributing to the pace. I think he's yeah. most likely to run last. <laughs> OK, <laughs> I mean, I think he'll lead to the middle of the back stretch Speed and he's going to stop and he's going to fail. 
Okay, we all we we all kind of agree on that. Um, yeah, there's, there's just too many others, and we're, we're about to get to one that if to me a strong quality. Oh, what's he doing all alone through a first quarter? Someone's going to make a move. Let's hope right. so. Right. Um, Catnip is a horse. I, you know, I love betting these kind of lightly raced young. Uh, not for as young, but in comparison, you know, these lightly raced up and coming, getting better kind of horses. And I, I tried really hard to get to catnip and, and ultimately I just, I just couldn't do it. I just, you know, I think he's got upside and I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's this good at some point in his career. Uh, but I, I, I don't like him tomorrow. What about you guys? I've definitely seen some wise guy chatter about him. And I, you know, this is one of the li the lines we struggled with here. Uh, you know, looking at the output and maybe could have gone six to one on him. And since there's chatter, maybe that's what he ends up being. I actually think he's, I don't like him at eight. So I hope he takes money because uh, that, that just looks like a, you know, perfect trip dressed up United Nations. You could say maybe he made the lead too early and got caught but he was six to five in there and he's just, he's just going to be over bet here. Another, as Dan has said, one of many, we're not going to be shocked if he gets it done. I do think he's going to be over bet. So I'm going to have to pass. I I agree. And I, I mean, look, I like BJ Hernandez as a person, as a rider, but he's not Joel Rosario. I mean, he just isn't, he's a good rider. And I think I bet on him many, many, many times. But losing Joel's, I think, is going to hurt this horse. And I don't know about the mile and a quarter with him. He's going to be too close to the pace. He's going to get bet. I, he's not one I would include in my tickets. If okay. he won, though, I, I wouldn't be shocked if he won. Sure. But he's just, I think there's going to, I think what's going to happen is there's going to be a log jam when they straighten. And the speed's going to be backing up, and these closers are going to be weaving, trying to find holes, and they're going to be exploding. And I, I think he's one that he's going to run probably just like that last race where he might stick his nose in front at the head of the lane, but I think somebody's going to run by him. And I, I think he's more likely to run third, fourth, or fifth fading. Um, so I'm not putting him on my tickets. All right. Brings us to Chad's other horse. And, and Ed, I will say this. If you were ever, ever correct on a line, I hope it's here. No, it sounds I, like I, you and I disagree. I love the nine. Love <laughs> it. <Yeah. laughs> love the nine. And, 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 if, and if Rick's horse misses the, the van ride or something like that, uh, I'm all in. All, all, all Wow. In. So um, lay off no concern. Not, not even a little bit. Uh, you know, this horse ran a huge race at the fairgrounds coming coming from France. Uh, I thought, you know, way too much to do. Very, very, very wide. Uh, didn't like the track at Churchill. Uh, didn't like the track and had a terrible trip uh, into Manhattan. Should have won the Manhattan. Uh, if you watch the replay, you'll see that. Uh one won the United Nations at, at eight to five, and I bet a lot of money on him that day. And I don't normally bet favorites, and I don't follow horses. That's not why I like him. He tailed a little bit after that, but I did like him a lot uh, at that po point in the year in, in 2022. Um, I, I thought he was going to be one of the better turf horses in the country l l last year. It did not turn out. He's a horse. He's not a gelding. They kept him around. Uh, if Chad's starting him in this race, which he's had success in, we know, we know that, uh, that tells me that he likes him. He's ready. Uh, he's had the horse up at Saratoga, uh, where he's got his eyes on him. Not, 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 not. And Chad keeps good horses all over the place with his, with his assistant. So that's not really quote a tell, but, uh, I, I think this horse has a very, very strong late, late kick when he's right. I think he gets the perfect setup. I like Pratt on him. I got no knocks whatsoever. I like his works coming in. Uh, he's the closer that I think is running late and passes them all. Wow. 
Wow. Well, you're going to get your price. Don't get too yeah. excited. I, I got to point this out, gentlemen. I've been wrong before. <laughs> well, we, as we all have. Yeah, you're, you're going to get your price. I mean, there's, there's a few lines. I Like I said, I maybe like to have back on the card. This isn't one of them. Even and and really, I would I kind of thought could be higher. But, you know, Brown, Matacat, Dove, Pratt, it's all there. The horse is going to take some money. But with the layoff and you know some other recently proven ones, you're you're going to get your price. Um, and the, the layoff is what scares me. Uh, the the talent's right. there, but need needs one in my mind. Okay. Well, I, what I, what really scares me here is, and you guys know, I am completely one thousand percent against the no Lasix garbage. This scares me with this horse. He gets Lasix in the fairgrounds, and he runs a great race. Doesn't get Lasix, flat. Doesn't get Lasix, flat. Gets Lasix, runs the best race of his career in the United Nations. Watch the replay in Manhattan. He wasn't flat. Well, Trehuben, I know, took off and was never coming back to him, and he got some trouble. But then the sword dancer doesn't run a step. Turf Classic doesn't run a step. Now he's on the shelf. Did he bleed? Did, did he get hurt? What happened? Why is he off so long? Comes back. Don't get Lasix again. I, I think this horse might need Lasix. And, and I could be reading too much into that. And 10 to 1, hey, never talk anybody off a double-digit horse. He would be my fourth horse if I went to a fourth horse in the pick five. Once I figure it all out and everything, you know, because I think that one sprint with uh, the McPeak horse and the rail horse are the only two you need. You got the cinch and the Beverly D. So we can probably go pretty deep in here and not have a huge ticket. So maybe I put this horse in as my fourth, but that no Lasix really, really scares me that that he may not only need a race, but he may he may be one that needs to be in an optional claimer or sent wow. somewhere where you're allowed to get Lasix. So uh -huh. Uh, odds on horses and other legs of a pick five make strong bedfellows. So may, maybe we'll all be team Jonathan by the time this race comes around. But maybe vertically. But, but, but the only difference is team team team, team Jonathan is going to just be be him and, and maybe 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 Dutro and maybe not even. I may just game time decision just go with the nine. You know, so stay tuned. Get that kind of price. Why not? Yeah, no, I I think he runs a big race fresh. I really do. Uh, win for the money. Anybody? No, I think, I think if Ruiz sends him, he could just inject some pace. But other than that, I think he's fading by the backside and hopefully gets out everybody's way. You know, that Ruiz as a rider is is underrated and under the radar i don't don't really know a lot about him but i, I watch him and he he's he, he you know he's got a live horse he, he puts him in the game he really does he's winning some races this, this pedigree though is a concern for the distance too it's uh appreciate them supporting the race but th this would be the this would be my least likely winner yeah. okay interesting um, yeah, i could see him 30 40 to one brings us to last year's winner um a horse that early in his career I thought was really going to be special. And he's a quality horse. He did win th th this race last year. Uh, he's beaten the horse I like, and the horse I like has beaten him. But um, he seems to have tailed off to me. Uh, I don't know. I mean, those two races on dirt, now he's going back to the grass. That could, that could you know, help a lot. He lost to up to the mark, who's probably – or arguably the best turf horse this year, or one of the best best turf horses this year. I would argue might maybe the best one. Um, does he bounce back tomorrow, guys? Not, not, not for me. My, not for me. And, and hey, I, he owes me nothing after that win at Churchill when we just flogged him. So I, I love this horse in my mind. You know, you want to follow the horses that you're lucky with, right? But I just can't. I, why did they put him on dirt? I have no idea. And, and then after those two bad exper experiments, now he's back in, in a grade one. And I don't know. I just don't understand what they're doing with him. Um, and he's a good dolphin. He's a full horse. I don't know. I, I, I just don't get it. Maybe he pops up and runs huge again like he did last year. But he, I think he's going to be too close to the pace, too. 
he's one that the only one I like that's going to be close to the pace is, is uh, never explain. The rest of them I, I don't like. I'd rather take somebody from way back, and I just don't see it. I He'll probably be an eight to one, too. I think you're dead on with the number. I just – I don't know. I just, I, I yeah, he's the, not on it. He's not on anything for me. The times he's lost touch early, he's absolutely nowhere. And when he's close, his last three races, he, he doesn't, he doesn't stick around. Uh, the shine's off for me. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm more to that camp as well. Uh, I keep looking at him though. Something keeps gnawing at me. That makes me go back, back looking at him. Maybe because I got a good dolphin hat on. I don't know. Um, no disrespect to the dolphin, but I'm going to have to go against you guys here. But, uh, so interesting race. We've got, we've got some differing opinions, yeah. um, which is, 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 is always interesting. I kind of, I kind of like that. It shows that it's a, it's a competitive and interesting renewal. So, uh, uh, should, should be an exciting race to watch. I'm, I'm excited to see colonial get a race like this, uh, it's one of the few tracks in the country that I have not been to. Um, and I hear it's a pretty nice place. So, uh, yeah, it's good setting. I got a good race here and yeah. we need to, we need to renew these conversations more often. Absolutely. Always fun with you guys. We had a lot of fun with the Derby, a lot of fun with the Preakness. We'll, we'll pick out a few more of the big races. Yeah. Well, we got the Travers coming out. That'll be hot. One. Yeah. We're trying to, trying to yep. do, do the Travers. Um, and I know you've got some some strong opinions at Saratoga tomorrow. Want to throw them out real quick before we go, or or yeah, yeah, absolutely. I was a little distracted because Marcellus was pulling away, and I bet a bunch of money on him at Saratoga. Uh, I got I got five go. to two. I got five to two, so I, I'm happy with that. Is it uh, all right if I catch Dan's picks uh, when I watch this? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Gotta, go ahead. You got to run. You got another show. Go ahead. All right, good all right. luck, guys. All right, all right, Ed, I'll say I'll, 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 I'll talk to you soon. Ciao. Yeah, I just wanted to mention uh, sixth race, Island Rose, 10 to 1, Charlton Baker, great post. He's only run once. If you watch it, it looks like a give to me. I mean, his slow start, he was lugging in in the lane. They let him run down the stretch, and he's right back at the same level. I, I, I think 10 to 1, I think the price will hold, too, because you got McCarthy. You're not got you know. You don't have Iran or Jose. He's not going to get bet hard. He's completely hidden, and I think you got a big chance to get a ten to one shot right on that wire. So I wanted to make sure Island Rose. If anybody watching this, hopefully I gave you a twenty two dollar gift. All right. Um, I do have some opinions on the card tomorrow. I'm not going to bore you with them here. We've got our, our weekly Saratoga show, Saratoga Saturday. We do it every Saturday at a meet on Past the Wire TV. Last week, we liked three horses, Cogburn, Program Trading, and Wider Barrio. They all won. So if, Hard you're to beat not, that. if you're not watching Saratoga Saturday on Past the Wire TV, you got to hate money. Uh, <laughs> so... so uh dan always a pleasure man go get him uh all right, my man and we'll we'll do do a few more of these going forward man all right thanks all right. for having me have fun make some money ciao ciao